This is the front door of the Almond and Threshing Show blacksmith shop. And uh, I'm just going to make a short video of what goes on and is going to go on in the right half of the shop, which has got some machine tools in it. The left hand side, of course, is the forge shop with, I think, four or five forges. So this is the forge shop. It's a Sunday morning, so the shutters aren't open yet. The center of the shop with a door that goes all the way from front to back, uh, you're looking out toward the front right now. And then this is the side that is the machine shop area and has been for a long time. 10 or 15 years ago, there was a guy who ran a lathe in here and did a pretty good show. But since then, all that's happened is people have been apparently donating equipment and uh, kind of or just dropping it off here. And so what we got is what people dropped off. <clears throat> and over the last half dozen years or so, none of this has been operational. So a year or so ago, Dean Ziegenbein, one of the Guild of Metalsmiths members, uh, got interested in the machine tools in here, and particularly in this little shaper from the uh, 19th century that makes it 1800s. I think he said it was 1870, 1880, something like that. And his interest was that it was a kind of a unique uh, shaper. It did not have the reciprocating bull gear mechanism inside. Instead, uh, uh, there were two pulleys like that one, flat belt pulleys, and one uh, fork mechanism that would move the belt back and forth every time the stroke went one way and the other. So that must have been terrible wear on that mechanism but uh, that's the way that shaper was designed. So what Dean has done is to modify the main drive shaft with a crank mechanism, which is right there. And so we can crank it back and forth and cut metal uh, as a demonstration project. But the main reason for this video is uh, just to a comment that Dean has a sort of a plan for the shop uh, and I'll probably do this in pieces but uh, uh, so the shaper is usable uh, as a demonstration tool and with supervision of course we have that uh, kids or adults can crank the crank and and cut slivers off of here we still haven't connected the automatic feed mechanism there's some parts missing and that'll maybe be a longer term project but at least it's demonstrable and as of yesterday we got this uh, camelback drill press running and it still needs a little TLC and a switch because we just have to plug it into an old beat up extension cord uh, a little motor alignment still needs to be done but it runs and we've uh, drilled some uh, 3 8 plus holes with it and it probably runs about 60 70 rpms right now which is fine for the stuff we do I don't believe there's a plan for this large lathe right now, uh, but just yesterday we moved this horizontal milling machine into position, uh, in, so it'll, there'll be a position along the floor left to right here with machine tools on it, and uh, Dean's plan is to install a line shaft up above here to run at least two or three of those tools, and that shaft is the larger of the two shafts sitting on the floor here. That, that one, not this one. And Dean has uh, uh, located the bearing journals and all the hangers are here. So it's gonna be a big job, but it'll happen sooner or later. This lathe will probably be moved much closer to the front in following years and there's a uh, uh, kind of a large mount uh, motor drive for that electric motor drive and we'll probably stick with that we even have the change gears for it up there on the wall uh, there's a nice power panel here looks like there's a welding outlet but there's only one 120 volt receptacle in the place right now so in this corner here are some of those things that have been demonstrated and uh, I think uh, Jim Monk, who runs this shop for the Omelon Threshing Show, is going to ask the Omelon management people if they wouldn't mind selling some of the stuff that we'll never use 
and of course the proceeds would go to the Almond Threshing Show. And let me see, hiding back here is, is that a saw sharpener? I think it is. And if I move around the milling machine to the back, here's a post drill and we just uh, made a hand crank for it yesterday. Apparently it was set up for uh, flat belt drive only. Anyway, so now we will mount that next to the wall, probably right in this area right here, and we'll have a hand-powered uh, drilling mechanism of some sort. So here's just another shot of the things that we probably would get rid of. The corner is hiding a punch press, and we don't even know, it's, it's got an electric motor, we don't know whether that's three-phase or single-phase. Well, nope, I'm sorry, we do know. Uh, we're pretty sure it's single phase, but I'm sure it's 220 volts. There's the plug. Okay, but I would recommend personally against ever firing that up. That could go away too, as far as we're concerned, to give us a little more room in the shop. So that's kind of what I had to say. Uh, we got some really nice LED lighting here. And if I kind of point up here, I guess all we'll get is a white glow, but that has really brightened the shop up, which is super for us. Dean has been working, this is uh, Bob Brown here that you're seeing, and uh, Dean has been working to free up some of the machines, and we've got everything more or less turning on that machine. Obviously it needs to be, you know, lubed, oiled, and many, many things cleaned up yet, but that'll be probably the first machine that the intention is to run off the line shaft up in the sky above it. Here comes Dick Carlson, master blacksmith. Jim Monk, manager of the shop. Part, part of Roger Degner. <laughs> All right, gee, you're gonna be on television. <laughs> and that's it for today. I'm not worried. That's right, there's no film in this camera. Is that watch still off for you, Roger? Yeah, I can't go to the post office. <laughs> <laughs>